News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. 800-288-9227 is our number. That's 800-288-WBAP. This is, this, is, this is unbelievable. Wait till you hear where they're telling residents, hey, people are stealing so many cars. There are so many instances of criminals, like hundreds, more than a thousand. It's gone up like hundreds and hundreds of percent in the past couple of years. They're telling them, hey, so many people are uh, stealing cars, and what they're doing is they're breaking into your house, and they have real guns. They're, they're, they're literally saying this, but they don't want to hurt you. They just want your car. So leave your car keys in this area. I'm not kidding you. I can't wait to hear what you would would do to that recommendation, what you recommend doing in that kind of a situation. I'll tell you about that in a second. But first, I have a little bit more on uh, one other issue that came up uh, with Pierce, Bros- Pierce Brosnan or Pierce Brosnan having to uh, f- be found guilty after pleading ple- pleading uh, not guilty, even though there's pictures of him on these uh, areas he's not supposed to walk in uh, Yellowstone Park because you can die, get boiled alive, etc. Um, now, uh, producer uh, Garrett, too, just uh, told me that in Japan, where my son is leaving for tonight or tomorrow morning at uh, 3.30, 3.45, we're heading to the airport, um, Japan, where he'll be for four and a half months, studying um in tokyo which is awesome uh but the this family's fined for suicides in japan you told me this producer gary but i didn't believe you so i had to look it up because i'm like come on if you lose a family member to suicide the uh, for example it's it's train suicide apparently that's a very common thing over there sadly uh, in fact uh, uh my son told me that uh, suicide is way higher in japan for many cultural reasons that don't have to be, but they just continue to do it, unfortunately, because they continue to not change the way their society operates in that respect, at least. Um, but uh, in fact, I have this report right here. Losing a family member to suicide is tra- traumatic enough, but in Japan, families of trained suicide victims face extra trauma in the form of a hefty bill for the train company involved. I mean, I can't believe this. There are 13 train companies in Tokyo. A majority of them have this policy of charging the victim's family for the cost of rail stoppage. Oh, my gosh. Families for uh, finding families for this is not unique to Japanese trains. A 70 year old hijacked a bus and killed some passengers. His parents in, in May, I guess, of last year, his parents recently fined the equivalent of, well, 70,000 pounds in U.S. dollars. What is that? Let's see. 75,000 pounds in U.S. dollars in U, yeah, USD. Let's see. Uh, what? $89,000? Hold on. Uh, that's 76,000 U.S. dollars. Oh, my gosh. Wait, that's the euro. I want to see the pound, man. Pound. Here we go. British pound. That's 89 grand. It is. They're fined eighty nine grand by a bus company in Japan. There were thirty three thousand suicides in Japan last year. That's unbelievable. Five percent of them were on train tracks. They wouldn't discuss their suicide policy. They say, but it's understood that the Cebu Railway is one of the biggest ones there, which I'm sure my son will be riding on uh, possibly daily. Honestly, uh, they have a case on a they assess costs on a case by set by case basis. Um, really, what they're doing is saying. Oh, here it is too. Neither Cebu or East Jap- Japan-, Japan Railway, their biggest tr- Tokyo train company, offers any counseling to train drivers in this situation. Wow. 212 suicides at East Japan stations or lines in the Tokyo uh, catchment area last year. Whatever that means. Uh, anyway, so, wow. I, what they're trying to do is say, don't think about you, think about your family. They're going to be fined 89 grand. Don't do it to them. You know, so like in addition to you, your your family dealing with this horror, this selfish, stupid choice, and and with this horror, you will be dealing with. Uh, they'll be dealing with this. So craziness. Okay. This this, I mean, I thought we had that can't be true when I saw the story, but it is true. Toronto police are telling people that there's been so many car 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 thieves stealing cars in the Toronto metropolitan area 
that they're and uh, that uh, they want you to leave your key fobs by your front door. So that the criminal can come in and steal your car without attacking you and killing you. Uh, I wish I was making this up. This is their police station, their police department there. It says, leave the key fobs near your door. Avoid being attacked in your homes by potential burglars. Um, they said they advised in a town hall. They do not do not confront the violent criminals. You don't have to confront them. He says they often have real guns. To prevent the possibility of being attacked in your own home, leave your fobs at your front door because they're breaking into your home to steal your car. They don't want anything else. They're literally helping the criminal be matched up with your car and for you to just stay out of the way. Let them steal your car. Quote, they say, a lot of them that they're arresting have guns on them and they're not toy guns. They're real guns. They're loaded. This is in a state where they're a country where they're literally taking away every gun they can from you, rolling back everything. Did they just ban handguns in Canada? I think they did. I don't know for sure. Did handguns uh, guns get banned in? Let's see. I think I think they did Canada. Let's see. Ba 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 ba. What? Wait, wait, here we go. It, none of, anyways, it says Canada bans new handgun sales. This is uh, two years ago. So they're taking away all of your guns. And yet they're saying, hey, these guys have guns and you don't. So leave your keys out there. Just let them just drive away. You're kind of helping match a, a, a thief with your car. I want to ask you a few questions. Actually, actually I just want to ask you one. What would your advice be? To somebody in this situation where somebody breaks into your home to steal your car keys uh, so they can steal your car, what would your advice be? Would your advice be to, la- to leave a little, uh, you know, those little tables they have by the front door and just li- have a little dish there for your keys and let them sit right there and have a, maybe have a sign pointing them, you know, an illuminated sign flashing with an arrow to your keys? Keys here. Um, would you, you know, maybe you leave a little uh, milk and cocoa and some cookies like for Santa Claus. And then maybe put a little little sign on there. Here's a guest book to sign. And, um, you know, we love our car thieves. And then put like a no gun sign up on your front door. That'll stop them. Uh, if somebody breaks into my house, they're going to get shot. And um, they're not going to get shot once. So they're going to get shot at center mass, which is where you're supposed to shoot them to stop the threat. And I'm not going to help them to steal my car. I'm going to help them to die if they're coming into my house. Uh, that's just how it is. Um, or I shouldn't say that really. You want to just help them, help stop them, you know, and hopefully they survive because you don't want to kill anybody. But my gosh, dude, I'm not going to wait around and you know, just hand you keys. Not going to fi- find out what you're doing if you want to kill me or not. Um, th- there's a memo they passed out to every single house. Uh, they call it home invasion, home invasion prevent, pre- uh, uh, hosian, home invasion prevention tips. This is great. I'll read them to you in a second, uh, and I'll read you the handout they have. But the do- they're also handing out certain things to put by your doorway to stop thieves from getting in. Instead of actually arresting the criminals and allowing people to defend themselves, they're doing everything but that. 800-288-WBAP is our number. What would your advice be to somebody in this situation where somebody breaks into your home to steal your keys and, or, and to steal your car? Of course, you don't really know why they're breaking in. But what would your advice be? Would it be like uh, what the cops are saying here? 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. And is this something you would do? Leave your keys at the front door? Maybe with a little note. Uh, 800-288-9227. I'm going to give you uh, some of these. Uh, I'm going to read off some of the handouts they've handed out and telling you what to do so you don't get uh, hurt. Let the bad man break into your house and take your car keys and he'll leave and be nice. Maybe he'll leave a tip or some, uh, you know, a tip on the table. I don't know. A little payment. Uh, 800-288-9227. That's 800-288-WBAP. That's coming up next. I'll read you the memo and tell you what they're passing out on the Chris Crock Show. News Talk 820 WBAP. Now on FM at 93.3. Oh, yeah. Here we go, y'all. 
Uh, <clears throat> Toronto police are telling you to leave your keys by your front door so that when the criminals come to bust into your house, they will uh, they will not hurt you. They'll just take the car keys and steal your car. That's why they're there. That's what they want to do. Uh, that's fantastic. Isn't that great? You know you're screwed when they're telling you to leave your keys in the front so they can steal it from, from you. And they have guns. They're, these are real guns, not toy guns, they say. I mean, what, what kind of a gun is there? What are you, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is the state of uh, the affairs and uh, state of the union there in, in uh, Canada. Um, the number of car thefts in Toronto has doubled in recent years. In 2023, more than 12,000 vehicles uh, stolen. And this is actually a town uh, in the Toronto police area. Um, and the police are qu- uh, qu- quoting this, so I guess I don't know how Toronto police jurisdiction is, but I don't know if it's a suburb or, or its own city that's in part of the Toronto metro. But in this town, uh, car thefts went from 5,000 a year in 2019 to 12,000 in 2023. Woo! Thieves begun breaking into houses, steal keys in order to steal cars. And um, they said, uh, to prevent the possibility of being attacked in your home, the police said, leave your fobs at your front door because they're breaking into your home to steal your car. They don't want anything else. <laughs> How do you know? A lot of them that are they're arresting, uh, we're arresting, have guns on them. They're not toy guns, they're real guns. They also published a home invasion prevention tips guide. An officer at a recent community meeting suggested that people leave the keys of the vehicle in a Faraday bag by the front door. While well-meaning, there are also other ways to prevent auto theft-motivated home invasions. What's a Faraday bag? Is that like uh, one of those bags that you can't track or something? I don't... I remember a Faraday bag. Okay, let's see what that means. Um... What does Faraday bag do? Okay. Protects electronic devices from external electromagnetic interference and other unauthorized access. I, I, what does that mean? You can't open it unless you have a code or something? I don't know. Uh, in Toronto, home invasions and break-in uh, enters for auto theft occurrences rose 400% in 2023. Police are concerned about an escalation of violence where all sorts of weapons and firearms are being used to steal vehicles, and that includes during home invasions. So, I mean... You know, I, this is not a problem for me. If you break into my house, you're going to get popped. And that's just all there is to it. Uh, not, not here. They're telling you to hide. Uh, instructions for uh, instructions. They have instructions they give out. Park your vehicles in the garage. Ensure your driveway is well lit. Keep exterior lights on all night. Install a home security system. Activate an alarm. And uh, do not post on social media when you'll be away on holiday. Well, that's, of course, common sense. All right. Uh, in Toronto, police in one of their regions there, the York region of the city, passing out doorstops to extra security as extra security against burglars that have been kicking in doors. Doorstops have been handed out. So isn't this amazing? They're not going to put the criminals in jail. It's social justice. One local resident says it makes her feel very high, high risk for break-ins at a very high risk. Police in Quebec advised residents in January not to share footage of thieves stealing their packages from their porches to the media, to social media, stating it could be a violation of private life. So they don't want you to have video of the criminal and let everybody know who this person is to look out for them and to catch them. No, 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 no. Don't shame them. I mean, that that's insane. That is insane, y'all. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. What's your advice to somebody in this situation where somebody breaks into your home to steal your keys or steal your car? Uh, also, I wanted to get into uh, this crazy, crazy story. Uh, we have a young man in his 20s. He is called a TikTok influencer by the Daily Mail today. And he stormed the Capitol during the January 6th riots. And you're not going to believe what list the government has put him on since he fled the country. Even though he apparently 
is a role model, like a, like a, I shouldn't say a role model, a model citizen. We'll tell you about that coming up next. But first, Joe in Fort Worth, you're on News Talk 820 WBAP, and now on FM at 93.3. Joe, what do you say? Do you leave your car keys by the front door so they can steal them without, without hurting you? Absolutely not. But I wanted to, to give a couple of more tips that, that was not mentioned in that. First of all, the, the bag you were mentioning, mm-hmm. there Faraday is, bag. Uh, yeah, the Faraday bag, there is an electronic uh, uh, tablet that these criminals will sometimes carry. Mm-hmm. Your fob always gives off a signal. Oh. That, uh, and so what, what it does is that uh, it blocks that signal so that what, what would happen is that that tablet they have, it makes it where it copies the signal that your fob's giving off, and they can unlock your car, possibly even start it without your fob. Oh, so, so that's what that's doing is blocking that. But then also, wait a minute, uh, I, are you saying that they're leaving it at the front, or what, they're doing it so they can just not break into the house? They can, you know, get the get the code by having a it. it, it uh, like, do they have to even be on the other side of the door in the house from it if the, if the keys are by the front door? No, if, they're, if it's by the front door, uh, they could possibly be out in the driveway as long as the signal's strong enough and, oh and the technology that they have can actually pick it up, then then it'll work. Wow. Um, but then also, uh, what was not mentioned in those tips is that uh, a lot of times, uh, whenever your front door, back door, garage door, whichever it is, is mm-hmm. installed, the strike plate and the hinge, uh, the hinges are usually installed with three quarter inch screws. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I suggest that you uh, take those screws out and put three and a half inch screws right uh, into the strike plate and the hinges on all doors, mm-hmm. uh, because then obviously it's going to be harder to kick. Uh, and then on your windows, you can actually put auxiliary locks, which is basically secondary locks on the windows. Yes. That if they do get the primary locks unlocked, it's harder to open the window because then they have to defeat the secondary locks. Very, um, very interesting. Yes. If you are if you have a deadbolt that's within 40 inches of a window at your front door, back door, garage door, whatever it is, uh, then it's suggested that you have a double bolt uh, deadbolt installed, which basically means that you have a key on either side of the door. That way they can't break the window to simply reach in and unlock the deadbolt. Right. That's interesting. Um, you know, I um, what I recommend is, uh, like you said, putting in the deeper uh, the deeper um, screws, but also you can get these uh, fantastic things that are, um, I don't even know how to describe it. I think it's what they're telling people to buy or they're trying to get them for them, these door stops that uh, you kind of, it's like kind of uh, spring to pull it out and then it comes in, it's like an L shape and it goes and it clicks in there and it's holding the door so it can't be opened uh you know uh, it it stops it from opening um i don't know if that makes any sense to you but that's got uh, three uh, major screws in it going through the frame as well so the door can't move more than you know an eighth of an inch or something uh when you when you get through it thanks for your call joe i appreciate it very much what what are you going to do if somebody breaks in your house to steal your uh, keys supposedly you won't even know what they're breaking in for what are you going to do I just, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Is that it? Popped uh, and dropped? Yeah, not going to happen. There you go. Appreciate so. your call, Joe. Uh, I, I recommend you don't go to Toronto. Uh, don't don't live in Toronto, my friend. Uh, don't go to Canada. I it's that whole, That's a fallen place, unfortunately. It's a fallen state, truthfully. Okay, this is absolutely crazy. You're not going to believe this. this is insanity. TikTok influencer who has 350,000 followers and uh, like 6 million, uh, what, what did they say, like uh, 35 million total views, over 6 million likes, has gone on the lam because he was in the Capitol building on January 6th. He's an Eagle Scout and uh, has no criminal record. And he wore a GoPro camera on his helmet for the whole time. He has all the video, which doesn't mean anything, because if you're there, they call you an insurrectionist, which is false. There's no such thing as insurrectionist on that day. Joe Biden said you need an F-15 to overthrow our government. Uh, a real insurrectionist is what happened when Yegevni Prigozhin uh, shot down. Um, he killed, I think, 13 soldiers and shot down eight helicopters and a jet, uh, like uh, one of their more advanced jets. I think it was worth a billion dollars. Uh, and he was 156 miles south of Moscow. He he took over Rostovnadon, which is where the uh, headquarters are for the Russians, uh, right on the other side of the border of Ukraine. He rolled in there. They were greeted as heroes. Uh, they waited in 
line and didn't cut or anything at the 7-Eleven. No, nobody had any problems. It was all c- calm and, and cozy, and they got uh, nice plaudits when they arrived there. Then they went up to Moscow, and like I said, they had 156 miles south of Moscow, um, one of their major highways. And that's when Putin sent in the attack helicopters and a, a jet, among others. And uh, they shot down all those, as I mentioned, killing 13 soldiers. Uh, and uh, Putin had put tanks at all the entrances of Moscow. And uh, so that's an insurrection. This was not. There's no no one person had a weapon. And the only person who was harmed is Ashley Babbage. She was shot and killed and she was unarmed. Um, the uh, none of these uh, officers died on that day, and uh, the one that died a few days later, uh, officially, his family, his doctors, and everybody says it was from um, underlying conditions. He had like a stroke or something like that. It had nothing to do with what happened that day. So um, this was a riot, if you want to call it that. And a lot of these people trespassed. Uh, this is um, this is uh, what's incredible on this one is they have charged this guy with terrorism. They literally have, he's on the terror watch list. These new documents he got suggest that he's been placed on a domestic terror list under Section 266 of the Comprehensive Counterterrorism Act, giving authorities broad powers to surveil him. An Eagle Scout. What this is, is turning every person who was in that capital, whether they did anything bad other than trespassing or not, and uh, uh, put them in jail and call them insurrectionists so you can point to them and say, look what Joe, uh, look, at, look at Donald J. Trump, what he did, he's an insurrectionist. This is only to, a political tool by the Department of Justice to stop us from following Trump and to stop us from voting for Trump, and the best thing we can do, every one of us, is vote for Trump uh, this November to expunge this DOJ of all these sick Um, undemocratic Democrat police squad goons. That's all they are. Uh, I'll get more into the details here, but do you think, and this guy's a 20-something guy, he did this interview with the Daily Mail, and they're just calling him Mike because he doesn't want to reveal his real name, but they confirmed it's him. He actually walked, before I give you all the details, I'll ask you a few questions, actually. Do you think a 20-something guy who went into the Capitol on January 6th but didn't get violent, didn't do any vandalism, should be put on a terrorist watch list by our government for fleeing the country because he's fled the country? And what if he didn't commit any violence? What if it, was, it wasn't even vandalism? Do you consider somebody like this a terrorist? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. After spending, so he fled. He went on foot. He turned off all of his uh, electronics, his cell phone and everything. And because when the FBI, showed, his mom sent him a text saying, the FBI came to my house and questioned me about you yesterday, followed by a sad face emoji. <laughs> It's okay. Mom, kick the emojis out. Stop the emojis. Just be direct with me here. This, that's ridiculous. The time the FBI is coming for you is not to put any emojis on. I don't care what the emoji says. I mean, can we please stop this crap or is something this serious? Now, this guy needs some help down here. Uh, our number is 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Chime in now. Uh, the document suggests he's been placed on the terror watch list after spending three months. So he, by the way, he, he walked over, he drove down, turned all of his electronics devices off and used paper maps to drive from his residence to the Texas border with Mexico. Four days later, he crossed the border on foot. He flew from Mexico City to Zurich, Switzerland. He lived in an apartment there for six weeks, then applied for asylum and was sent to a refugee camp in, Ber- in Berlina for three weeks. <laughs> a refugee camp. I have, I'm from a first world country that's allies with you. I have money. Um... <laughs> you, you can go with all these terrorists, the real terrorists that have come in uh, uh, from uh, the Middle East and are, quote, migrants, illegal migrants. Um, well, he was there for three weeks and then they said, no, you can't stay here. But they allowed him to instead buy a flight to Costa Rica January 31st. So what, two months ago or a month and a half ago? 
Uh, then he went into uh, Costa Rica. He said he was taken to a hotel. He told me he wants to seek asylum. <laughs> he's, he's one of the only people going south to seek asylum. Um, while detained, he was interviewed, and uh, he had told he was told he had been flagged in the U.S. system as a domestic terrorist, meaning he would deny be denied residency there. So. Uh, this is pretty amazing. He says they initially asked if uh, you'd committed any crime, and I indicated no, but the Costa Rican immigration has confidential information. They say that you're wanted for terrorist acts. Can you explain that to me, please? I'm hurt, Bob! <laughs> no, don't say that. No, no, don't say that. Remember, we're the threat. Trump voters. We're the bad guys. I think they're looking for something to put me in jail because the FBI went looking for me, he said. So now... He says um, after his about a week, his application was denied, denied, and he is settled now in another undisclosed country. So he's in another country, and apparently he didn't. He chose not to even report, and he just showed up there, right? Um, so there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to stay. He said. So I'd rather hop from country to country to make my take my chances than be trapped as a voluntary prisoner with no hope for bail or parole. Wow. Mom says he's doing good. He's getting his peace of mind back. I went down there to show my support for Trump, and this should not happen. An entire election was stolen. There's no question in my mind. She says, however, my family members and relatives of myself and my husband and I believe the opposite. That's fine, you know. What you got to do is love each other, though. That's what matters is within your family. So, um, yeah, the mom says they're calling all of them domestic terrorists it's because they know how the public responds. It's a trigger word. We thought our government wasn't crooked. Our judicial system and media wasn't crooked, but the people are in, char- in charge are corrupt. So there you go. Wow. I My prayer is that Trump wins and then uh, he pardons the January 6th people, except for the Oath Keepers. And you know, the, I don't know the amount of them, the people that are like, uh, there's Oath Keepers, one of the ones... I'll just guess there's like 30 or 40 of them somewhere around there. All of them should go to jail and be there for a long, long time because they're, I mean, they're idiots, but they actually seriously thought they could do something bad. And those ones conspiring to do something bad and then bad intentions should be taken down. But uh, not, you know, about 95 to 98% of the people. This is just uh, sick. Uh, All right. uh, Coming up next, we're going to have a little fun. We're going to shake things up a little bit. And uh, have a lot of fun, I promise. Let's see. I got a few other things I'll mention to you that uh, got kind of a nice list of some good stuff to talk about. All right. There is a bizarre new uh, foreign uh, movie on Netflix where people turn into chicken nuggets. I am not kidding you. I'll tell you about that. Uh, Mark Wahlberg had this injury on the set and refuses to get surgery, even though his doctor says he really should. Oh, the uh, legend, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, hysterical Elon Musk versus Don Lemon back and forth on Twitter uh, after he said, Don Lemon, there's no deal. You suck. That's going to be good. Absolutely going to be good. Oh, and Kid Rock in town, and uh, and he uh, launched this big uh, thing, riding it on a horse somewhere. I'll tell you about what and where, what's going on with that, and where this is in the Metroplex. All that next on the Chris Crock Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. Okay, uh, let's see here. Elon Musk says pompous fool Don Lemon is still free to upload a show to Twitter and receive advertising revenue despite a spat over questions. Uh, Elon Musk branded Lamont, Don Lemon as a pompous fool after they spectacularly fell out of a following uh, following an interview from the former fake news uh, TV star's new Twitter show. Musk wrote, even though I think Don Lemon is a pompous fool who spouts nonsense. <laughs> He's still free to upload his show to Twitter and will receive advertising revenue. The billionaire posted shortly after Lamont appeared on The View with the leftist hens to detail their fractured relationship in their upcoming sit-down interview. That's so funny. Musk approached Lamont to debut a new chat show. Uh, after his axing on Twitter, but the uh, tycoon canceled his contract following a tense interview for the same show film for the same show filmed recently. That's great. 
Musk shared his thoughts, and uh, Don Lamont revealed that Elon dished him dished him about his private chats with Donald Trump before the tense interview resulted in the Tesla billionaire canceling it. Um, Lamont grilled his former boss over uh, then that that's all Lamont grilled his former boss over proliferation of hate speech on Twitter since Musk bought it. Oh gosh, I think being fired by Elon Musk is something you should wear as a badge of honor," said the uh, one of the leftist hens on and uh, told Don Lamont. Um. Anyways, uh, Lamont says this over their interview. Okay, and then let's see what else here. This is from Fox uh, News talking about this. Uh, Elon Musk declared CNN is dying, which it is. Listen to what he t- says about the ratings on CNN. It's unbelievably how b- unbelievable how bad their ratings are. It's horrible. It's actually the worst ratings like in years, apparently, right now. Uh, they've been plagued by a series of leaderships, blah, blah, blah. But Musk says CNN is a partnership with, C- with Le Mans. After that's canceled, he says his approach to his forthcoming show, Musk says, is CNN, but on social media. <laughs> That's Le Mans show, which doesn't work, he said. Um, he talked about how CNN averaged only 582,000 primetime viewers, finishing 12th among cable networks with a smaller audience than networks as, such as TLC, Hallmark, and HGTV. Wow. Things were so bad for in 2023, the network's in-house media reporter publicly questioned if the lackluster ratings could be turned around. Elon Musk said... CNN is dying. Oh my gosh. Anderson Cooper's the most watched show and only has 737,000 viewers. That is number 29 across all cable news behind 14 other Fox News shows and 14 other MSNBC shows. Wow. Meanwhile, Fox averaged 1.3 million total day viewers. Fox News topped all basic cable with 2.1 million compared to 573 for CNN. So literally, uh, CNN has one-fourth of the viewership of Fox. There you go. It's a failure, and uh, that's a good thing. Okay, so there's Musk in Le Mans. Poor Le Mans. He's sad. Uh, Kid Rock showed up. Did you catch this one? I didn't know this. Kid Rock showed up. It, uh, he, he, he went into AT&T Stadium with a, on a horse. Did you see this anywhere? I didn't see this either. Okay, he uh, came in on a horse in AT- AT- AT&T Stadium. I don't know when that happened, but I may have been in the building when that was going on right outside. I just don't know. Uh, he came in on a horse to launch the biggest weekend in Western sports, quote-unquote. It's the Kid Rock's Rock and Rodeo, followed by the PBR World Finals, Unleash the Beast Championship. Well, there you go. He says, I love all things Western, you know, rodeo, bull riding, just the cowboy way of life, even though I'm more of a Detroit cowboy I'm not, and not a real cowboy, he says. Anyways, God bless him. I love what he did when he shot up the Bud Light cans. That was fantastic. And it was, I think he, it was with a fully automatic uh, uh, gun, which is awesome. Uh, meantime, this is great. I watched the trailer a little bit, but I mean, it's in... Korean, but uh, remember that there's been some Korean uh, dramas that have been f- just fantastic dramas or um, there's some great, great uh, stuff. Well, what's that called on Netflix? That uh, what was that show they had? The the it's like the Hunger Games for Squid Games. I, my daughter and I watched that together. And it was like oh my gosh, it was like, it was insane. Um, and then there's another Korean movie that I saw. Um, it was a is. It was a comedy, uh, Bing Jung Hoon or something like that. I can't remember the guy's name, but it was hysterical. Uh, and then also, there's a net, there was a, 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 a what do you call it, uh, Apple series on uh, Korea, the Koreans after Jap- Japan, uh, you know, took them over and mistreated them horrifically. Uh, that's an amazing show too. But uh, Chicken Nugget on Netflix, bizarre Korean comedy drama about a man desperately trying to save his daughter who turned into a meat treat. Debuts today. He literally, they show the preview and the guy, his daughter goes up to a little machine, pushes a button button for a chicken nugget and it turns her into a chicken nugget. And then he comes and he's like, ah, he picks it up and he's like, I'll save you. What, what, this is, what are we coming to? But it might be a great movie, even though it's, it's, what I can't stand is reading the captions the whole time. 
It has to be really good. Maybe it will be. It's a 10-part series created by film uh, South Korean film dictator, uh, dictator director famed Lee Byung Hyun. Anyways, <laughs> the picture is hysterical. It's the father and the son looking in a in a, uh, a refrigerator, and the daughter's on a pile of nuggets and with her face smiling. Wow. Okay. And uh, Mark Wahlberg was told he uh, he did a horrible thing to his knee. He had um, what was it, a torn meniscus. His knee was all massive and gnarly and backwards or something. And he, he said, I'm not going to get surgery. His doctor said, you really should get the surgery, like really, really, really. And he's like, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to heal it. So he's working through that. He's, he legendarily gets up at 4 a.m. to pray and then work out. God bless the man. He's an inspiration. I wish I could get up that early, but I can't. Um, I'm going to bed not too far from that time because <laughs> I work at night. 